Hello, and welcome to Grug Gaming, and welcome back to our Let's Play of RPG Maker MV. In the last episode, we got to see our entire cutscene, all the work we put into making the intro for our game, the, the setup for it. Um, one thing I did notice very lastly, in the last section here, I didn't like that sound effect of walking out, so I'm going to take that out real quick just on screen here. Uh, I'm going to take this sound effect out. I just didn't like the sound effect. So, Grug is set. He comes out to the overworld, and it's time for him to make his adventure. So, where does Grug need to go? Well, the minute the player walks over just a tiny bit, no, they won't see that actually. They won't see this. They'll have to adventure around. Now, what we need to do, like any good RPG, is we need to give that character a way to fight battles, become stronger, and then face stronger enemies. So what we need to talk about today is enemies and troops and setting up battles on the screen. So if we go into our database, you'll see that we already have, again, with a default set out, a uh, default setup, a whole bunch of enemies. And these are already statted and set up to be, um, they kind of increase in power as they go all the way to the top. I have ideas for all this for the end, so. I think we should have enough enemies for everything that we want to do. And I have an idea of how we're going to add in some enemies to, uh, when we get to a certain part of the game, we'll make our own enemies. But for right now, we're just going to use the default before we make any of our own. So there's some basic slimes you can see here, and bats, and hornets, and spiders. So these kind of bug and the slimes, these bugs and the bats, they all have some what look like very similar stats and they give out very similar amounts of XP and gold. So I'm thinking these guys right here are probably good starting enemies. When we start getting to anything that gives over 10 experience, that feels like it's the next level of enemy for me. So we're gonna stick down here to these three enemy types, this hornet, the bat, and the slime, okay? So these three enemies, we need to set up so they can go into combat with our heroes. To do that, we need to set up some troops. Now, you'll see they actually already have these troop types set up, which is kind of neat. So the troop type, what it is, is it says, hey, this, these two slimes are going to encounter our party in a combat situation, and there'll be two of them in place. So if I were to go to our main map here. Uh, let's put Grug right here. There we go. So if I were to go to our ma our overworld map and I were to edit the map, you can see on the right hand side I have this encounters window. So we can click encounters. We could say slime times two over the entire map and we're going to have that have a weight of five. If you increase the weight, it's more likely that the enemy will appear. So again, if you want to have a if you want to have it so that you know, the, the player may encounter a, a special enemy that gives a lot of gold, maybe one out of five encounters instead of every encounter. You could set that weight to one and the other weight to five. I'm not sure if that's how the ratio works exactly, but the higher the number, the more common the encounter on the list. So if we do this, it shows that we added a slime times two encounter to uh, the entire map with a weight of five. And I'm going to lower this encounter steps. This dictates how often encounters happen. I'm going to lower it because we won't want to be walking around forever. So if we go ahead and start our game. And we walk Grug around a bit. He's going to get an encounter. There's Grug on the right hand side. And then we have our two slimes and our battle window. Now Grug is set with a, being a warrior class. He has some specific attacks he can do. We'll get into that in a little more detail later. Today we're talking about setting up the enemies and setting everything up. So a couple things to look at here. What looks weird? Well, Grug is kind of in a weird spot. He's, he's halfway in the screen and the enemies are right underneath him. It just doesn't look correct, okay? And that's because the enemies are set in a default position for, actually, um... I'll have Grug run away. Uh, they're set in a default position. I just want to turn all this way down. Okay, maybe I can't turn it down any lower. Ah, there we go. That'll work. Um, 
they're set up in a default position for a different type of battle. So if we actually change our settings underneath database, underneath system, see this side view battle? That gives you that classic, our good guys on the right, bad guys on the left battle look. But if you want, you can uncheck this, and we can actually change it so that when we go into a combat now, let me actually do this, because that just gets, um, oh, there's all kinds of stuff open that shouldn't be. That's handy. Uh, what am I doing? There we go. Uh, okay. Maybe that'll adjust that a little bit better. So, what we have here is now, instead of our characters being on the right-hand side of the screen, it's a face-forward battle with those enemies, like you would normally see in, say, a uh, an earlier Dragon Warrior game type situation. So all the fight mechanics are the same, just visually it looks different. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our side view type of battle. Because I prefer that look, personally. And now that we've done that, what we need to do is we need to set up our troops so they look better. So if we go into troops here, you can see here's our slime times two troop. We can actually go in here and we can move these guys a bit. So if I move this guy up here, and I move this guy right here, and then we hit apply and OK. Let's go back into our combat. So here, you'll see now, those enemies are placed far off to the left in a more reasonable position. This guy's a little high up. We probably want to move him down a bit. So we can do that as well. So let's move him down about midway, and then let's move this guy down about here. And then this midway spot is going to be in line with your character. So if you have flying guys, you might want to put them up high and ground guys down below. So let's give that a shot. Let's do one more test here to see how that looks. So now, there we go. That looks better. That looks like the enemies are where they should be. Oh, we're getting attacked. We can fight these enemies. We can punch them. Grug's a pretty tough guy, so I'm not too worried about two slimes. And when we finally beat the last slime here, Hopefully we'll beat him. Wow, that was loud. Okay, so we get a little screen at the bottom. It shows us how much experience we got, how much gold we got. And then we fade back in. And you'll notice another thing that's kind of neat here. Because we were on the woods, we got that woods background. If we walk out here to the field, you'll see that we have a field background. The game will do that automatically based on your tile types. Um, if you... Uh, let's see what the mountain background looks like, if we can get over there. Roop. So a cool mountainy background. So the game does that all automatically, just based on what you have selected. So, for the tiles, which I think is pretty cool. So there's Grug. We know what the combat looks like. We know how that's going to work. The next thing we need to look at is, as Grog fights, he's going to need uh, weapons. Because we saw him take his weapons off the wall. So, we need to go ahead and change that out. I forgot to check my timing on this. There we go. We need to go ahead and switch that out so that he's not just attacking with his fists. So the next thing we're going to do is go into our database. And we're going to set up our actor. Grug, you can see that right now he starts with no weapons, no shield, nothing. We're going to go in here and change this. So we can go into weapon, and we can give him an axe. Again, because he's a warrior, he can only equip axes. We'll give him a hand axe, which is the basic ant weapon. We'll give him the basic shield. We'll give him the basic armor. Uh, probably leather top. 
just to begin with. We're going to be able to get him other stuff. And uh, he needs to have a helmet. Let's give him a, a, a... Oh, goodness gracious. I don't want to go too high here. Um, bandana, leather bandana, fur hat, turban, leather hat. Let's give him some leather armor. That seems too heavy. Let's give him a bandana to start. And accessories, should he have anything? No, he should, because I don't know what any of that does yet. We'll look that up. So we give him a buckler, a hand axe, uh, a bandana to wear around his head, and a leather set, a leather set of armor on top. Okay? Now, what does all that do? Well, if we go into our weapons, we can see that the hand axe gives a negative uh, negative 10% hit rate, but increases his attack by 15. So if we go up to the next level, the, the battle axe increases his attack by 30, increases his attack by 50, 70, and so on. So the other cool thing is, you can see, for example, the Axe of Perun is a uh, an axe that's said to wield the power of the God of Lightning, also adds this thunder attack element to it, as opposed to physical, which all the other uh, axes use. So that's the equipment. We'll be able to set up different equipment later in the game. But that's how you can check and see what any of this armor does. So, for example, his leather top, made with the best leather, He's where it gives him a defense of five. And you can see also the different icons that have been used. And you can change this around any way that you want. But we're going to give him a basic set of armor for right now. Now, you might be asking about this accessory. Uh, if we look at that, uh, I think those are under armor. Yes, so a talisman of light. Here's the what it does. It gives HP regeneration plus 4%. Gaia Blossom, a small bauble allows you to evade all incoming magical attacks, ups your magical evasion. So these are some pretty cool items, and we might give the players some of these later on as like a, uh, a reward for a big battle, but I don't want them to start with any of these. Let's not give them any of these to begin with. That seems a little crazy. So, back to our actor. We're now equipped with weapons. So now that we have some weapons on Grug, when we go into combat... The really cool thing is, there's going to be an animation for him to use that weapon. So, when we fight now, instead of just a punch with our fist, we'll actually have an axe. That's pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Oh, that's so loud. Oh. Okay, I need to fix that. Uh, we'll... <laughs> We're gonna... There we go. Now that won't be so crazy loud. Now, did you notice, though, how tough that... How, how strong his axe hit was? I'm not liking the fact that... That Grug can kill the first enemies in the game... In one, in one hit. I feel like there's really no challenge there for Grug, right? Like, look at this. The player doesn't feel any danger. These monsters might as well be invincible. Um, they seem a little poorly balanced. So let's change the balance on it. Now, what I want to do is, instead of adjusting the balance for every single monster uh, here, doo -doo -doo, let me find it. Instead of going into enemies and adjusting every single monster up and down, I think it's the problem really is that Grug is overpowered, is the problem. So what that would mean is all his stats derive from his class, which is the, he right now he's the warrior class. So what's happening is this is setting too high right here. So you can see that his... Maximum hit points. They start at 645 at level 1. And if we pump this up, you can see how much his stat is going to increase each level. So we're going to actually lower this. Um, and you can change this curve. So if we go through the different classes, you can see that the warrior gets more hit points than everybody. The mage doesn't get as many hit points on his curve, but gets way more magic points. So what we're going to do is we're going to mess with this class... And we're going to go to, uh, what are these quick settings? 
oh, this is the curve setting, so you can just kind of set it to the best you want. Um, we're going to lower this value, okay? We are going to take this way down. In fact, we're going to take this down to about 200. All right. Next thing, match magic points. We're going to take this down to like 15. Um, well, we could do it all in the same thing, probably. His attack value is way too high. We're going to take this down to a 2 or maybe a 3, okay? His defense value is way too high. We're going to take this down again, a 3. All our war fighters will have a 3. And then, as he levels up, uh, oh. There we go. You want to go in and... I forgot, you have to change this curve to match the new ability that you put in. Or else it won't curve correctly. Alright. So... We just don't want him to ramp as insane as he could before. Uh, defense, we've already set the curve. We're going to start him at 3. Magic attack, he starts at 12. Magic attack should probably start at 1 for our fighters. Magic defense. And we'll, uh, again, one for our fighters. Agility, 19. Again, we'll start this at a three. And these stats I'll do just pretty much what you expect them to. And we'll do a two for luck. All right. So, now that we've adjusted his stats, let's go in and take Grug into combat. One more time. So this time, we should have a much more reasonable battle. So now we have 200 hit points, only 15 magic points. He doesn't have any skills, of course. We can attack, slime A. Now there's danger. Well, we missed, but... Are we too weak? I think two hits seems appropriate to kill the monsters. Um, we are, however, taking a little too much damage for uh, my taste in that combat. So, the very last thing we'll do is we'll go back in here and we'll tweak this one more time. And we'll... Do we want to up his defense, which would decrease the amount of damage he's taking, or do we want to change his hit points? I think this defense value, if we take this to a 5, and we up his hit points, his initial hit points value, to uh, 300. There we go. I think if we do that, I think we'll have hit right about the sweet spot. I don't know if you're with me on that, but we'll see. All right. So let's test this out here. Move that mouse out of the way. We got 300 hit points. We did a critical hit, which is fine. That feels a little better to me. You can fight one or two combats, and then you're going to be needing some rest. So, we got six experience points for that. The last thing to consider for all of this, uh, for that whole metric, is the leveling. So, let's look at his experience curve. So, level one is at 50. Uh, hit, at 50 experience, he'll level up. And then, 112, 204, 329. So... If you figure that he's going to get to level 98 is going to be the top level, you can see the experience curve. You can see what you're kind of looking at as far as how much experience. That means that with the six experience he got, it's going to take about 10 fights for Grug to level up. I feel that's reasonable. But the thing is, in 10 fights, is Grug going to uh, be able to you know, live. I don't think he's he going to make it from here to our town, which is way over here. 
I mean, that might take more than two fights, of course. We want him to level up before he gets there. So we're going to give the player a place to rest right here. So what we'll do is inside of Grug's home, we will place a place to rest so that he can heal up. And we'll do that in the next episode. We'll actually go and do a couple other things in his house. We'll give him a place to rest and heal here. But the next thing we want to talk about is we don't want him to fight slimes all the way here. That doesn't make sense to fight the same enemy, right? That's not, not fun. That's not neat. So we're going to actually do what's called regions. We're going to do our region setting here. We have a whole bunch of regions. So what I can do is I can set region 1 is going to be these sections right here, right around Grug's house. All the plain sections, right? And we'll do all of this right here is going to be the planes around. We're going to go down to here. This will all have the same enemy. I kind of like that. Okay. And then region two will be the woods right here. Woo! And the reason we're going to do this is if you've played RPGs, you know that the encounters are different in the woods versus uh, what you would encounter in the plains. Oh, we need to fill this in. And then over here, we're going to have region 3 is going to be the dark vegetation. And then last but not least, uh, let's get uh, more of this here. And then region four will be the mountains. Oh, we went too far on that one. We'll delete that in a second. So what do these regions do? Well, these let us dictate where the enemies are. So if you remember, on our overworld map, slimes can populate anywhere on the map right now. Well, we're going to change this. Instead, I only want slimes to populate on regions one, and regions two. Nope, regions three. I'm sorry. Okay. So now, if we play, if Grug's in the woods, we have no enemies dictated to attack here. So there will never be an attack right now. But if we come out here to where region one is and walk around, we'll have our encounter with the slimes. We might need to give him a tiny bit more defense. Yeah, we're going to up his defense a little bit. We're not trying to make a masochistic game. Alright, so. With that in mind, database, Grug, uh, warrior class, defense. Let's give the warrior a base defense value of 7. Okay, oh, and generate new curve based on that. All right, that feels good. So what do we do with the rest of this area? Well, we have these default troop types here, right? So let's go ahead and see what the other troops are. So we have our two slimes. We have these two bats. These bats fly, so let's put them high up in the air. Up here, okay. That feels good. And we have these hornets. Hornets fly again too, so we'll put them kind of way up in the air. Offset them a bit. That gives them that cool, like one of them's flying lower than the other look. So that looks good. And these spiders, if I remember correctly, are a little bit scary, right? Yeah, they're an experience 13. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put the slimes and bats in the normal areas. We're going to put the hornets in the woods. And then area four is going to have a different type of enemy. We'll go up to the 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 spiders there in area four and the rats. Spiders and rats in area four in the mountains. So what you end up with is if we go to our map, as we've seen before, and we're going to add in the bats and we want the bats again 
to be located in areas two. And then we're gonna add in the hornets. And we're gonna make the hornets in areas, oh, I'm sorry, area two for the hornets. Well, let's put the hornets out in that field area. Let's put the hornets out in region three. And you can also encounter them in the woods in region two, but not as often. Okay, so same uh, slimes can show up in region one and three. Bats can show up in region two. Hornets can show up in region three at the same, same commonality as slimes. Actually, slimes. We'll add a slime for um, region three as well, but we'll make them less common. so that you're encountering more hornets in region three than you are slimes, okay? So, if you are in re region one, you will only fight slimes. If you're in region two, you can encounter bats or you can encounter hornets. If you are in region three, you will encounter hornets, you might encounter slimes. So we hit okay. One more play test here. So for in here, we should see hornets or bats. There's the bats. And they're a little bit scarier. Okay. If we're down here, we should only encounter slimes. There we go. And if we go over to region three, which is the darker grass. Oh, we're in the woods. So bats make sense. For in region three, we will most likely encounter hornets. There we go. Pretty cool. Oh, the hornets are dangerous. Oh, and Grug is poisoned. Oh no. All right, Grug needs a lot more defense. He was doing too much damage earlier, but too much, not enough defense. I hate to mess with this again, but we might as well, while we're making this slightly longer than normal episode. Well, I mean, not that long. It's only 30 minutes. We're fine. Uh, let's go into our classes again, get into our defense here, and let's up this value to 15. There we go. Maybe we'll have to make him, you know, maybe we'll have to go back to the default values. Uh, for that on the database. That might be what we have to do. Because... Oh, I like how it just changes a tiny bit. Let's, uh... You know, I got all... all excited earlier about making him weaker. Maybe we shouldn't mess with this. If you want to mess with a lot of this, go for it. Um... Maybe we won't mess with that as much because we just don't understand all the parameters well enough. So anyways, let's try one more time. Just to see how this looks. So Grug's gonna fight. Grug's back to his I'm much tougher version of him. He's been blinded. Come on, Grug. There we go. Grug's victorious. Got 10 experience, so five fights like that will level him up to level two. So, that's where we're going to end this episode. I really don't like that slime being that low down. I'm going to move him up a bit. Um, so, with that being the end of this episode, let me fix that right now. Boop. Uh, troop types here, I'm sorry. Uh, where is that slime troop? This guy is just way too low to the ground. Let's get them close together. There we go. That looks good. All right, so with that, what we're going to do is we are going to come back next episode 
And like we talked about, we're going to give Grug a place to heal if he wants. We're also going to add in uh, some extra features here in his house. We're going to do interactables. So make it so he can look at the cross and look inside his home at his bed. Maybe use his bed to heal. Uh, we'll figure all that out on the next episode of Gaming with Grug. But now we have a basic idea of how to put enemies in the world, how to set enemies where we want them specifically. So I will play with that a little bit more. Uh, and when we come back, we will set up Grug's Interior House events. And we will talk about what's going to be happening here in the first town that he gets to. So folks, I'm going to say thanks for watching. Please tell your friends. And as always, we hope to see you soon.